Hey there, it is Michael Slobodnik with ServiceNow, and um, after doing a couple of videos last week, I thought, hey, what is some great content that we could do for this week? And in this case, we're talking about Gen AI. So generative AI, um, if you don't know what that is, search it, but basically the whole idea of ChatGPT or Azure, OpenAI, being able to take data and generate something out of it, typically emails or summarizations, those sorts of things. So um, I just upgraded my demo environment to Vancouver Patch 2. So if you haven't gone to Vancouver yet, um, this is, you know, in the Vancouver point to it. Um, if you're on Vancouver and you haven't gone to Patch 2 yet, hey, this is where I'm now starting to see the whole Now Assist uh, configuration. So from um, Vancouver Patch 2, after installing a lot of the Now Assist plugins, one of the things we now have available to us is the Now Assist admin page. And the admin page makes it much easier to set up all of the Now Assist generative AI type of capabilities. Um, prior to this coming out, you kind of had to install the plugins, figure out where it was going to use. It wasn't always obvious, you know, because it's new. So, um, you know, content's still being created. But basically, um, with the Now Assist setup and everything, we have got this control panel available for us. Uh, it shows the various features we have available, um, you know, which workflow we have for the Now Assist, you know, right there. And of course, some general settings um, that we have available here. Uh, the one thing I'm gonna tell you is when it comes to the open AI uh, information in terms of the uh, generative AI controller, I am using open AI, it's a paid account. Uh, it's just for demo purposes. Of course, we have open AI, we also have, um, uh, Azure open AI, you know, for more for enterprise. So, you know, how you set that is up to you. I had to set it up for OAuth 2.0. Um, if you're familiar with OAuth 2.0, great. If you're not do a lot of reading and the setup is sometimes a little complicated with certificates and all that wonderful fun stuff. But once you do get it set up and you get the now assist all set up and the last step is there is you do have to go to system properties and specify which, uh, which technology you're using for your Gen AI controller. But once you get that set up, you get the Now Assist, uh, uh, Now Assist admin here where we can specify and say, all right, what plugins do we have to still enable? Um, basically broken down by each uh, particular workflow. Um, some basic account information, things like, do you want to opt out um, of, of ServiceNow AI development platform in terms of, um, you know, uh, sharing anonymized data. Uh, also, there's the Now Assist panel right here. Um, so the Now Assist panel, we will see in a little bit. But, um, you know, for the most part, the Now Assist admin is really where it's all at in terms of being able to manage everything. Uh, it's also where we can go through and say, hey, I want to enable or disable features for specific uh, Now Assist capabilities based on workflow. So for example, I typically focus on the uh, creator as well as the ITSM workflows, because that's a lot of my background. That's what I've been working with so far. And like on the creator side, for example, um, you know, I turned on the flow assist and the code assist. And um, once you once you activate them, you're relatively ready to go. The only caveat is you do need to make sure that you add some roles into the user. I think it's a SN underscore like now assist or, or SN underscore assist or something. Um, you know, I'm sure there's more documentation out there with it, but if you do have a user that's going to be using it, they have to have the appropriate role first. I spent so much time trying to figure out why is, am I not seeing this? And it turns out, oh, I needed the right role. Log out, log back in. Now it's good. Um, but it's pretty neat in terms of saying, okay, here's the different capabilities I have on the technology side. You know, I've already turned on the incident assist capabilities, uh, which includes the resolution notes generation and the incident summarization. Um, and the nice thing is when you do go through and, you know, turn on a skill, um, there's just a few settings that it kind of takes you through in terms of choose your input, which is typically like what tables you've got to be your input data. And this is, if you notice, read only, um, you know, it's going to be like, how's it going to display? Do you want it in your product? Do you want an analysis panel? Those sorts of things. So basically long story short is the now assist admin panel makes it so much easier to do everything. Wonderful, fantastic. Um, so where we start to see this? Well, 
um, where we really do start to see this now is into you know any place where we're working that particular workflow. So for example, if I'm talking about the IT service management, that's where we're getting into like the operations workspace, for example, service operations workspace where um, we can go ahead and maybe hit a particular incident. And we'll just bring a random incident open just from demo data, nothing too crazy, where you know we've got some information about it. And when you turn on the Now Assist panel, which I kind of like because it you know, is across the whole uh, navigation for the whole platform, so you kind of use it everywhere, you'll see this nice little, almost like a little star up there. So now, if there's something I want to use the Now Assist for, I just hit that button. And for example, I may say, um, generate resolution notes. It knows the context that I'm in since I'm using Workspace. And what it's doing is kicking off the workflow calling the open AI spoke, sending this information to it based upon what we chose from, from what you saw in the setup. And it just takes a minute here. Here we go, we're starting to get some data. Um, and here's the resolution notes right here. So it's kind of neat with this now assist because I can pretty much, you know, have this open in whichever context I'm at and ask it to do something. Uh, but then they also have it set up in certain things like, you know, the resolve where it brings up the resolve menu and it automatically pulls in the resolution notes here for me to modify and then i can select my you know resolution code so this is the part where generative ai really saves a lot of time because you know we have all this structured data with incidents and short descriptions and you know notes and all this stuff and much of the time whenever i'm closing incidents back in my day when I worked in the service desk, I had to sit there and like kind of think, okay, how do I, am I going to describe this? And that could include in communication, summarizations, knowledge base, articles, what, whatever kind of thing that I need to make a natural language description for. This is saving me a lot of time um, because it created it for me. And so now instead of having to think, okay, what am I going to do to put this together and spending, you know, it could only be a five minutes or so, but it's still time. Um, this is generated for me and now I can go and just modify it and, you know, hit resolve and that's it. So the biggest thing about generative AI is saving time. And it's not going to be that kind of thing where you may be saving three hours from a workflow. You could, it could be where you're saving five minutes from each transaction of a workflow. Well, if I'm someone closing, you know, 10, 15 incident tickets an hour, and I can save five minutes per incident just from not having to think so much of this description, that's a huge time saver um, because it's going to add up very quickly. So that is just the ITSM side. But the other part we kind we come into now is uh, any time we have the scripting. So this is on the more on the creator side. I'm just going to bring up a, uh, a script example here, but basically that text to code portion is where we start to see that in, in the script editor. So any place with JavaScript, um, business rules, script includes, you know, that's where it's going to be. Where we start to see the now assist on creator is, um, if you go to the help here, you can see that we have this, uh, control enter. Here it is trigger AI. So if you put a comment query for all active incidents, do command, I'm on a Mac, so I have to do command and enter. You kind of see the little thought bubble there. Once again, it's sending out to OpenAI, trying to find it, coming back. And there's the code, um, which is fairly accurate. You know, my variable records is incident, um, add active query, query, and then while next, do something. So it's kind of nice where it gives me all this blurb. Now, for someone who doesn't know JavaScript or coding, this is going to be confusing. Um, but as someone who does do JavaScript, if I need to, this is a great way to go ahead and just get a code snippet and get a, an example of code to use and I, save me time. Uh, the final area where we start to see the generative AI is under Flow Designer. This is pretty exciting because in Flow Designer here, we also have it to do recommendations. So if I bring up an example flow, very simple in terms of 
I did a log, update an incident, and now it's saying, hey, here's some examples. So I could do something like, you know, let's do an approval. There, under core, let's ask for approval. We're, we're just going to set this up. This is going to be in the context of that record. Approval field. Anyone approves, we'll do the person who opened it, and we'll do their manager. I love the uh, relationship data there. So easy to do. And we can do done. And it's giving me some other durations. And look, typically, after we do an ask for approval, we then get an if, because we want to say if it's approved. Oops, I hit the wrong button. Um, so we could do F if approved. Approval state is approved. So once again, the recommendations here are just basically looking at what's built out and then you know, starting to recommend what makes next, uh, what makes sense to be next. So like I said, typically when you do an approval, you do like ask for approved. But basically, you know, if it can save me just a couple minutes, yeah, that's it, maybe a minute on per activity here, that adds up and it just makes things so much easier. That's it, just a quick, quick brief view into Generative AI for ServiceNow. We talked about IT service management with resolution notes, summarizer. Um, we kind of hit upon, you know, the analysis panel a little bit. And then of course, in Creator, we have the uh, text code and we also have the uh, flow, rec the action recommendations in Flow Designer. So very exciting stuff. I can't wait to see what comes out next. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll get some more videos going around that. I'll talk to you later. Have fun.